Today, the first person who reads your application is not human, it's AI, and it's pretty damn accurate. And the craziest part, the algorithm does not read any of your working activities, any of your letters or recommendations, your personal statements, nor your secondary. Today, we'll review NYU's med school admissions algorithm. We'll talk about what's wrong with modern medical school admissions, how the model was built, whether it's better than humans, and most importantly, what it means for you and your chances of becoming a doctor. What's wrong with modern medical school admissions? In 2019, 53,371 pre-meds applied. 8,932 applied for 102 spots at NYU. Then it's screened by a simple spreadsheet. You need a GPA greater than 3.5 and an MCAT greater than 509. Each application was read by two faculty reviewers. And here is the big problem. This process cost 6,000 hours of faculty time yearly. AI can do that job better in fewer hours with less bias. For example, NYU found that early in the cycle, there were more pre-meds with higher GPAs, higher MCATs, stronger clinical experiences, and stronger research. And what happens to human ad comms when that's your level of competition? Do you think they're perfectly unbiased? AI wouldn't have these problems. It reviews applications the same way every time. So, why should you care? Your application will be read by an AI first, and it is much more complex than a simple GPA MCAT formula. You need to know how the technology works, what it cares about, so that if you spend thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours applying, you better hope that it actually makes its way to a human's desk. Isn't it crazy that 59% or 5,000 of pre-meds who applied to NYU never had a chance in the first place? You can't make mistakes like that. So don't bother trying to find the answer amidst all the noise on the internet. Just read real, full, actual applications. We have eight full AMCAS applications that earn acceptances to the best medical schools in the country. Over 11,400 pre-meds are part of our community. Click the application database link in our description box below now to join. Methods how they built the model. From 2013 to 2017, about 15,000 pre-meds applied to NYU. They trained the model on those applications. Because these applications were in the past, they knew that Johnny's was accepted, but Ben, Mary, and Steve's were rejected. Then they asked the model to make recommendations on new applications. Would you, Supreme AI Robot Sir, either invite for interview, hold for further review, or reject this applicant. They did that with 2,910 old applications and compared these human recommendations with the robots. Then they did it again with 2,715 new applications in 2018. This was a trial, so the recommendation was not shown to the ad comms, it was not shown to the humans, but its recommendations were being logged in the background and eventually compared to the human faculty reviewers. But what actually goes into this black box? How does the algorithm make its decision? These are the application features that were used to train NYU's algorithm. And you can break it down into a couple of buckets. You'll notice that there's a bunch of things related to grades, your academics, your MCATs, your science GPA, your non-science GPA. There's also some of these fancier things like junior GPA, higher than sophomore GPA, junior BCPM GPA, higher than sophomore GPA, essentially an upward trend. Then there are things about your education, whether you attended graduate school, whether your undergrad was a top 25 program, whether you have prior degrees, a master's, a bachelor's, a doctoral degree, did you take a post back? education related things. Now we go to the extracurricular bucket, and really it's just in hours, athletic hours, leadership hours, medical hours, military hours. Remember here that the free text, the work and activities writing is not being read by the model. Our fourth bucket here are demographic information like your age, your gender, your parent's education level, the state of residence, things of that sort. And interestingly, another feature is the month of application completion. When did you submit your application during the cycle? And the larger point here is that it's quite amazing that the algorithm works even though it doesn't read any personal statement, any work and activities section, any letters or recommendation, any secondaries. Just from some of this quantifiable, yes, no numeric data, 3.97, 300 hours, just from that information, it's able to reasonably predict the students who would have been invited to interview by a human and the students who would have been rejected by humans.
Now, writing might not be included in NYU's screening algorithm, but it certainly matters to NYU's admissions committee and to every other medical school in the country. If you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you don't want to get through a brutal algorithm only to get onto a human's desk and submit a terribly written application. Our pre-med catalyst students that submit their applications on time have a 92% acceptance rate. That is more than double the national average. And our results are because we work so closely closely with our students. In fact, we can only take four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into the best medical schools in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Results. How good is this model actually? And if you're not a statistician, and I'm certainly not, the basic interpretation is that an AUROC score of 0.5 is basically randomly guessing. A value of 1.0 means you can perfectly distinguish between the category. 0.7 to 0.8 is considered good, and 0.8 plus is considered excellent. There's a second graph, the AUPRC, that is better for imbalanced data. Think like a rare disease that shows up in 0.1% of the population. In this case, though, we're not so imbalanced. The human faculty screeners invite 26% to interview, 41% hold for further review, and 33% rejection. So in 2018, when the algorithm was compared prospectively to the human reviewers for the invite for interview category 0.83, it was an excellent predictor for hold for review 0.62. Not so good for rejection 0.82 also quite excellent. So it's pretty damn good at figuring out who we should interview and who we should reject, but for everyone in the middle, it's pretty dang bad. The authors then broke down the outcomes. So here's a table describing the outcomes between the algorithm and the human faculty reviewers. You'll notice some absolute numbers here on the human side, the absolute numbers on the algorithm side, and the p-values here to see if there was any difference between the two groups. So for example, the authors present the data for pre-meds who identified as female in both the human and algorithm groups, and the p-value is above 0.05, which means that statistically there was no significant difference between overall interview rates um, for folks that identified as female. And remember, this p-value is only for this column, the invite for interview. You'll see for pre-meds who identified themselves as underrepresented in medicine, also no significant difference. There were some significant differences between median undergrad GPA and median MCAT percentile, but you can see the absolute numbers are not very different. 3.92 in the human category and 3.96 in the algorithm, 99% versus 98%. The most interesting part of this table is this row right here. For pre-meds who self-identified as disadvantaged, 44 out of the 1,827 were invited to interview, but much less, 25 in the algorithm group uh, were invited for interview. And that was a statistically significant difference. This to me is raising some pretty strong alarm bells. It is not good that the algorithm has interviewed fewer pre-meds who identified themselves as economically disadvantaged. This is one of the fears of having algorithms look at applications. The fear is that they don't have the specific nuance or the context to appreciate the distance traveled for this specific population in medicine that's already underrepresented, but needs to be considered in medical school admissions. Whenever these AI algorithms roll out, special attention must be paid to this row. So not so good, right? The economically disadvantaged group being interviewed less frequently than the human reviewers is a serious concern. And so in summary, the algorithm is great for the extremes, the really goods and the really bads, the grays in the middle, not so good. And this makes sense because the hold for review is this intermediate abstract concept. In fact, this is where the human faculty have disagreements between applicants. And chances are your application isn't a slam dunk or a rejection. Humans and the algorithms they're trained on won't all agree on your application. And to me, that feels nerve wracking. If you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you want to be so competitive that no adcom can ignore you. Our pre-med Catalyst students have earned full ride acceptances to Kaiser and the Cleveland Clinic. They've gotten into UCSF and UCLA. It would be an honor to support you in your doctor dreams. Click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Discussion. What does this mean for me? All algorithms depend on the data that they're trained on. 
And the data comes from decisions made from the humans who are deeply rooted in the institution's mission and values. For NYU, that means accepting students with insane median GPAs and MCATs. We're talking 3.94, 521. That's part of NYU's philosophy of missions, which is different from most other schools. So for pre-meds, that means we have to understand what each individual school is looking for. Appealing to an algorithm is not so different from appealing to the humans behind the algorithm. For me, the scariest part is how accurate the model is without reading a single work and activity, personal statement, letter of rec, or secondary. Yes, add eventually read these when making their final decisions, but it's kind of crazy how accurate the algorithm is without reading a single thing compared to the humans who did read them. As these algorithms get more refined, I don't think the first step is to take over and replace human adcom reviewers. It's mostly to take all those saved hours, the applicants that everyone agrees is either a clear acceptance or either a clear rejection. Take those hundreds, if not thousands of hours and focus on the 40% that are held for review. Now we can better understand what differentiates that gray abstract population and what factors lead to acceptance, what factors lead to rejection. These algorithms aren't going to make the final decisions, at least not for a while. The AI won't replace the adcom and the values and mission statements that the culture of this school is built around. But it does support the humans in pointing us in the direction of which pre-meds might need more of our time. Wouldn't it be great if adcoms didn't only have 10 minutes to read your entire application? Now that you know how applications are screened by AI, you'll get past that first date. Next, human adcoms will see your application and you'll want to know what they love and more importantly, what they hate to see. Here's what adcoms can stand, but don't always share. Thanks, see you soon.